ดีครับ My name is b u r i n Kamchat Pai I'm a professor of theoretical physics in Mahidol University in the นครสวรรค์แคมปัส in Thailand นครสวรรค์ province So this is the clip that I try to make and make clear that uh, you, uh, most of the physics student, will understand what is the system and uh, what is the property of the matter of the system. So I try to give you sort of definition of uh, how we learn physics, and we try to characterize what is the terminology in physics, so, such that uh, some confusion or when you Study further into the fundamental system, like such as a quantum system, you will make it, you will see it clearer that the 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 language of physics that describe in the formula or in the physical phenomena will be will be understood. So let me start with the the concept of matter of the system. Okay. So so far, most of the time we learn from chemistry. System is somewhat uh, is something that we consider and have a defined boundary of the system, like create boundary. But then, now in physics or in the other subject in social sciences, I, if you notice it clearly, the system have to come with something, something that a p e r t a i n collector, such as the, we call this a properties. So. The system has to come with properties. Property is some characteristic. It's not easy to change. Such as uh, this is, for example, the resistivity of the electric resistivity or the mass, initial mass. So the other thing is the name. So when you have system, usually you name it. Let's see. Uh, for example, okay. So, if you consider Newton's law, I'm talking about the system paradigm, where you have a system, and you have the the influence, influence. The sigma f is a force, and the mass is the properties, and the change in the state is actually. The state of the motion is the velocity. This is a state. So in the system paradigm, you have the influence, the properties, and the state, the change of state. This is something very similar to Ohm's law, where you have the a voltage different. This is the influence, and then you have electrical resistivity. And then you have the change of the state, the change of the charge that passing through a surface area in the conductor, in the conductor rod or wire. This rate of change of time. So, in this concept, you will have the influence here, the property here, and the change of state here. So this such a law. You can see it's the most of the time in physics and social sciences, including the demand and supply law in economics. You can also organize the the equation of state in thermodynamics in this form as well, which I can tell you in the later uh, later occasion. So you can see that if resistivity is very abstract, it's a conceptual. It's not something you can touch, you can feel, but it's a concept of something resist. The the flow, just like the mass, the mass is not the matter. It's not something like you have a shock, dust. But the mass is the resistivity of the chain of motion V. So now mass is a conceptual. It's not something you can touch. And mass surely is very different from matter. Okay. So here you can see the name. Here is is matter. Why this is the name of the system and property. Property is is a mass, and it might be the charge, it might be the spin, or it might be the heat conductivity or heat resistivity and so on. And most of this this thing in the like. 
electrical resistivity too. If you talk about the composite system or some, some larger system, you will have uh, this electric the conductivity or the resistivity and most of the time this change with the temperature because it is a complex system. When you talk about single particle or single field, you will talk about mass charge or spin only only. Right. So now we we know that matter is just a name. It's a generic name of something. Like this matter can be table, can be a shock, can be me, or can be electron. Right. So don't confuse when you say electron and you said put E here. Uh, this is the name of the electron. The electron is like that. When you put E there, it's a charge. This one is a property and this one is a name. It's a name. So when we see okay, a friend of mine. Okay, walking and see me and uh, along the corridor and you see him. Actually, I what I see is not actually a friend of mine, but actually what I see is the shape of a volume of, of my friend, of of my friend of say let's say Peter, right, Peter. So. What you see is a physical quantity, it's called a volume, but you see the shape of the volume of Peter. So what you see is actually not a solid, not a liquid, or not a, a gas or whatever, but would you see the shape or volume of such thing, okay? So this is, the, this is a physical quantity that you see of Peter. So you have to be careful not to use the concept of solid, or gas or liquid in a very microscopic scale when you think about an electron, right? So when you say you have an electron, okay, orbit around, okay, let, before that, we, uh, let me tell you about this. The, we are all com, com, comprised and composed of vacuum, okay, the emptiness. The reason that we can't really sit here and uh, our body cannot be absorbed into our chair is because of the proton that make of our body and the proton that make of the molecule, molecule of the chair they are repulsing each other so this repulse just forbid the absorbing of our body into the, ch the chair that we, we sit on. So this is all electrostatic force that is here. And then the, the model that means actually if you have a hydrogen atom, hydrogen more, uh, nucleus, which is just a proton, there at the size of the basketball, the ground state in the orbit, the distance, of the ground state electron, the, the property to find the electron in the ground state is actually one km, one kilometer apart from the proton. Let's see if you have a proton here, the size of about approximately a basketball or volleyball. The inner electron, the ground state, the lowest state of the energy state of electron, which will be properly fine found uh, at the distance about one kilometer from here, there's an inner orbit. So it's there. So then our body and everything, we, we, we get used to it around us in everyday life. It's just compose, comprised of vacuum, mostly. Okay, so what is electron then? When you try to describe electron as a particle or electron as a web, we should not consider it as a solid lump like uh, like this shock you can't consider electron as, as a solid lump as a shock you should consider electron as something with properties 
something properties. Let's see. So now we, if you have a proton here, and the quantum mechanics say that. The wave function, conjugate the wave function, saying that you have the probability of the, to find the electron in the lowest ground state energy state. It's here. It doesn't mean there are, okay, suppose that this is a single electron, okay. It doesn't mean you are able to find this one single electron many, many, many places at the same time. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that you will find this solid lump of electron in many places at the same time, or it appears many, many places at the same time. But it doesn't mean that the electron is, you know, solely as a wave, like you see the ripple of the wave in front of your eyes. No. You have to, to be careful that when you describe the electron as a particle, it's, a, it's about how you describe it. But then you describe it, you try to use the everyday light concept to describe it. But then everyday light concept say that, okay, when you have a particle, you have to have a lump of something like shock here, and you have a wave, you have to have something like a water wave that you can see in the sea or in the pond. But actually, you have to be careful that when you say something with particle, try not to think about something as a lump like that. When you say particle, you are talking about momentum. And we talk about wave, or maybe field, because all the wave are, all type of wave actually must be a field. Your field is a function of position. You are talking about lambda. So try to remove the concept of having electron as a lump, or as a wave like that, into lambda and momentum only. Why I, th I told you that, because Everything you see in the macroscopic world, you can see the shape of the volume. But then, in the microscopic world, there's no volume. Electron is elementally. You can excite an atom, which comprises of electron around a nucleus, and electron got uh, atom got excited. That means atom have a structure inside the atom. Okay, it's structure. But then, if you have a free electron coming from somewhere and you hit it with gamma ray, a high energy uh, photon, and it's just scatter. And this scattering is actually doesn't have any spectrum after that. There's no spectrum from the scattering. That means the electron doesn't have any structure. Electron is structureless. You can say that electrons have a volume, zero volume, zero size radius. So without any volume, it's sizeless. How can it occupy or possess the properties such as mass, charge, or spin? So that is the nature, and that is the nature. That means somewhere structureless, volumeless, you can have mass, charge, and spin. And this is reality. Then, when if you can take this concept, when you think about the crowd of electron in quantum mechanics, you must not say that there's a chance to find a lump, a lump, lumpy piece of particle somewhere called electron many many places at a time, or the high probability to find it here rather than here. You can't say that. But you better say that there is a high probability to, to measure, to detect a system with property M, E, and spin in this area. So the physical entity now is not a lumpy solid. The physical entity called electron or matter in general laws. It's not a solid lump. It's not the encapsulated system. But all the physical entity that we we are built of, we see are just the properties 
make of only name and properties only and it doesn't come with any volume fundamentally it doesn't have volume the volume when we see the shape of my friend the shape of the volume of my friend Peter is just an illusion it's just an illusion in the macroscopic world so the reality inside down into the fundamental doesn't have any volume you what is most important in the fundamental nature is the properties okay thank you I, I hope this is uh, can be useful for your, for the student or for anyone who come into theoretical physics thanks from NAS uh, Nakhon Sawan student for advanced study in Mahidon University Nakhon Sawan Thailand thank you very much สวัสดีครับ